Welcome once again to the show that fuels your appetite for adrenaline and alternative sports. Coming up, we start an exciting new season with the Red Bull Crash Dice World Championships from Finland. And then we head to France to bring you ski and snowboard action from stop two of the Swatch Freeride World Tour. All of that to come, but first we take to the skies as Jean-Baptiste Chandelier talks to us about his passion for paragliding. Modern outdoor sport has many facets. Today we accompany a French paragliding pilot Jean-Baptiste Chandelier. By perfecting his style and technique, he fulfilled his childhood dream of flight. My name is Jean-Baptiste Chandelier. I'm 28 years old and I'm from the Alps in France. Paragliding is my passion. I started in 2004. Since I was a little child, I've dreamt about flying. The easiest way to realize that dream in my region was paragliding. I took a class and the first flight was amazing. I remember it very well. Right after the start, I was up in the air. I looked at my wing above, then I looked down at my feet and there was nothing that connected me to the ground. I sat comfortably in my seat. My brain, however, was a bit confused why I lost contact with the ground. I think I'll never forget that moment. 
When you start paragliding, you have two options. When we decided to pursue our dream of flying, we were told that we could choose between cross-country, also called distance flight, where you focus on landing as far as you can from the starting point, sometimes hundreds of kilometers away, and acrobatic flight. As an acro pilot, you turn into a real freak, start with flight maneuvers and crisscross the sky in all directions. Suddenly I was smack in the middle. I'm not tentative, so I chose the spectacular route, because I love tricks and the like. Hence I started with acro paragliding and slowly but steadily reached a certain level. I always wanted to improve my skills and so I kept my nose to the grindstone. Acro is amazing because of the thrill. The craziness doesn't last forever, but the technical aspect does, and that's really enjoyable. For acro flights, you need height, meaning high mountains, and those can be found in Chamonix. It's an extreme place with steep mountains, giant glaciers, and rugged rocks. We started from the Aguil de Midi at an altitude of 3,900 meters. There we had a direct and not too difficult access to the Mont Blanc. We took the gondola up to 3,900 meters and descended across a ridge to the northern side of the Aguil. To be honest, we weren't aware that there was a 1,000 meter drop right below our feet. My friend Jim and I were looking for a new challenge, so we chose a place for acro flying where you wouldn't normally go. It was stressful though, because we normally aren't too fond of high mountains. Nonetheless, Mont Blanc, the Mont Blanc Massif and the Aguil de Midi were truly magic. So we enjoyed the spectacular view, but at the same time we were afraid. Mais en même temps, bah, c'est vrai que bah, le Mont Blanc, le Massif du Mont Blanc, l'Aiguille du Midi, c'est quelque chose de magique. Donc en même temps, on en prenait plein la vue, mais en même temps, on avait peur. We play with gravity. During extreme maneuvers, we reach g-forces of up to 5 or 6 g below or beside our wing. However, when we're above our wing, we feel almost weightless. Along with all tricks, I love the technical aspect of acrobatic flying. I enjoy being precise and I want to perfect things, so I picked up more and more massive tricks and with increasing amplitude. Thanks to my steering mechanism, I have a roller coaster in my pocket. That's pretty cool. Grâce à mon pilotage et du coup, ben, moi j'ai une montagne russe dans mon sac en fait, donc c'est vraiment sympa.
voler à deux. When you fly together and do air acrobatics, there's an exchange and the flight takes on a new dimension. There are so many fun things you can do when you fly together. We do the same moves, but it's much more emotional and satisfying. It's brilliant. Et ça permet juste de faire la même chose, mais en fait avec une charge émotionnelle encore plus grosse. Donc c'est vraiment génial. There's another style I really like. It's called Wagger and describes our dynamic evolution at the ground level. The objective is to touch the ground with the tips of your wing, to have fun and to slide with your feet, but always at speed. Chile is one of the best spots on earth for Wagger flying, especially the Atacama Desert near Leek in northern Chile. There's one place in the desert that's perfect for paragliding. It boasts beautiful dunes. Le sol, c'est que c'est ce qui va nous donner l'impression de voler. C'est-à-dire que quand on est. The ground is interesting for us because it gives us the impression of flying. Meaning, the higher we are up in the air, the more it feels like sitting in a gondola in the middle of nowhere. There's no thrill. However, when we fly close to the ground and see how fast it passes by. We feel the speed, then you really feel that you're flying. If you want, you can touch the ground without landing. It's very interesting and quite emotional, like a snowboarder who descends an untouched slope of fresh white powder. For us, it's similar. We descend from a dune at ground level with ease and speed. It's incredible.
and we'll return to the skies with Jean-Baptiste after the break. And later in the show, we've got free ride action from France and we bring you a report from the opening stop of the Red Bull Crashed Ice World Championships. See you in a couple of minutes.